Jason here, Blood Church, coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Wanted to continue our study on Romans in chapter 5, but before I do that, was, of course, if you need prayer requests in these times, leave them in the comment box. If you need support, God a Minute has a very good board that you can go check out. Um, for its chat, you can use your voice, you can, you know, you have different options. So, it's a Discord board. I, I've left it in a message out to everyone, and you can find it in, if you search it up as well. If you're new to, to the channel, subscribe, thumbs up, love to have you. As always, we are a KJV Bible-believing group of Christians, as we're instructed in 2 Timothy 2.15 to rightly divide the word of truth. If you're not saved, get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. He died on a cross for your sins. You're a sinner in need of a Savior. One sin will send you to hell. You can't be with God up in heaven unless you're forgiven for your sins. The way to do that is to believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is God. He did die on a cross. According to 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, verses 3 and 4 tell us that he was buried and he rose from the dead like only God could do. Accept that today if you're not saved. All right, Romans chapter 5. This is the greatest chapter in the Bible, uh, in my opinion, on, the, on death. And... Um, We'll take a look at that today. Verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, by believing in our heart when Jesus died for us, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So we stand in our salvation as a Christian. Whether we die and we go to heaven or whether the rapture happens, we're, we're standing in it. Amen to that. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. So these are trials in our life. Knowing that tribulation worketh what? Patience. As you get these trials in your life, they're hard to deal with. And you feel like you're alone, but you always have the Lord. And as you grow and learn to, to pray and trust in the Lord, you grow as a Christian. And your patience grows, grows stronger. Verse 4. And patience turns into experience. And experience into hope. So it's impatience, experience, and experience hope. The idea is more, you see what's going wrong in your life as you, you know, you gain experience. And um, the more that you know that there's, that there's something that could be better, the, the more likely you're going to look for something else and try to fix it, but you're going to do it in a way that is patient and, and kind and true and, and charity and love and the way God would attend you to work that out. Verse 5, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given to us. Wow, so the love of God is in your heart. Through what? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit that we have. Verse 6, For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. So when we were we were dead in our, our sins. And so, picking up from there, verse 7 of Romans 5. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. So a righteous one is merely keeping the law, but a good man goes beyond it. And would we die for one of those kind of people? I mean, people are pretty selfish. But God commanded his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen to that. And verses 6 and 8 really define the love God has for sinners. Um, love is God's nature. It's just the way he is, John 4, 8. Um, and he does not love with any dis in, you know discrimination, essentially. He loves openly to all sinners, and he opens his arms and welcomes all sinners to come to him. Um, even though God does hate sin, he loves loves you as an individual and wants your soul to be saved with him. Amen. He created you, and he loves you. Verse 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Amen. Um, our salvation comes, you know, to us. Um, Past, present, future, your soul is forgiven for all your sins. It's important to know. Uh, verse 10, for if we, excuse me, if for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Amen. So the next set of verses compare 
is a comparison between the first and the last Adams, uh, the last Adam being Jesus Christ. Verse 11, and not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement, where our sins are washed away. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, that's Adam, and death by sin, because he they took part they part took of that fruit, that forbidden fruit in the garden, Adam and Eve did, and so death passed upon all man, all men, for that for that all have sinned. For unto the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Amen. So there, you know, certainly there's no law for us. Um, you know, sin is a disobedience. It's 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 being unrighteous. It's not following the will of God, and it enslaves you. It enslaved Adam and Eve into into death. They certainly were going to then die. Uh, Eve had to bear chi uh, child labor and the pains of it, and it was a curse. As their bodies changed, I think, from that of God and and um, with a golden glow to more just like we are today. Verse 14, Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. So Adam's sin has been a, been a curse over all of man, who is the figure of him that was to come. That, that's the second Adam, Jesus Christ. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. The gift is not alone. It's, it's completely free. That, that blood atonement, that blood shed for you, um, you don't have to repay it, right? Um, it's been paid in full. Amen to that. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace. Um, you know, Adam committed one sin by dis disobeying that commandment. We talked about that. Since then, men have committed many offenses disobeying the, the you know, what the what God wants us to do in our lives, including the Ten Commandments. Men have earned their own death by their own offenses, and rightly show, so. Even a Christian, really, do you deserve eternal salvation? I, I think not. And so, every offense committed by man has to be has to be had to be cleansed, and it was by the, by the second Adam, by our Lord Jesus Christ, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, have abounded unto many. Verse sixteen, and not as it was, but one that was that sinned. So is the gift for the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. 1 Corinthians 15.22 and 1 Corinthians 15.45, very similar to this. It's a free gift of many offenses, not just one, right? It wasn't just for one. It's many of your, your sins. Verse 17, for if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in a life by one Jesus Christ. We get abundance of forgiveness for all of our sins. You know, we didn't receive forgiveness just for one. Verse 18, Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, that was the first Adam, even so by the righteousness of, of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's unlimited. It's, it's, um, it's unlimited atonement. Um, we're justified plainly, unlimitedly by Jesus Christ and his justification of us. And, and our life is, again, not worth, you know, not worth much without Jesus Christ. I mean, all our works are nothing but filthy rags, but Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit in us gives us that eternal life. Verse 19, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Amen. It's a beautiful verse. It's, it makes everything right. So the, the purpose of the law showing up between the two atoms, you'll see in verse 20 and 21. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. So when the law came in, there were just more rules to follow. There were more offenses to be had at that point in time because you couldn't follow the, the ordinances and the laws um, that were given uh, to Israel. But when sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Amen. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life. By Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen and amen. All sins will lead to death if uncovered by the blood of Jesus Christ. With that grace, atonement, we see we will receive eternal life once and for all. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 is a great verse.
that I think goes goes well with the message that this uh, Romans chapter 5 sort of talks through, uh, comparing the two Adams. Anyway, thumbs up if you like the message. Any comments or questions below, leave them. God bless and have a great day.